Okay, so one last slide to wrap up the discussion uh, that we've had so far about linear transformations and properties of being one-to-one -one and onto. So I just wanna summarize some of the results in one place here. So if we have a linear transformation T, which is going from Rn into Rm, with uh, A being its standard matrix representation, that this is gonna be one-to-one -one if and only if what we just proved is that if the equation Tx equals zero has only the trivial solution. And now we can just restate this in some other equivalent ways. Tx equals zero having only the trivial solution well, that would tell us that the solution set to the corresponding matrix equation, since there is some matrix A that um, we can use to represent this linear transformation T, that this solution set AX equals zero, therefore should have no free variables because when this homogeneous equation has free variables, that means we have the existence of non-trivial solutions. And yet another way that we can state this same proper property in an equivalent way is, well, if this homogeneous matrix equation, AX equals zero, has no free variables, that means the matrix A has a pivot in every column. And then lastly, recall when we looked at this notion of linearly independent set of vectors, that if A, matrix A, has a pivot in every column, that's equivalent to saying that the columns of matrix A are linearly independent. So now we get this nice connection between linear transformations, matrices A, and uh, solutions to homogeneous matrix equation, reduced row echelon form, and linear independence. So all of these big ideas that we've been talking about in this first chapter. And let's similarly revisit or visit this notion of onto and see how it can be framed using the matrix representation for the map. So still this same linear transformation T going from Rn into Rm, and we're gonna assume it's linear, so it has some standard matrix representation we'll call A. And so this map T is onto, first of all, by definition, if and only if any vector B in the codomain, which is Rm, there exists some pre-image, some vector X in the domain, so that when I multiply matrix A by vector X, I can get vector B. So in other words, we wanna make sure that every single vector in the codomain is also in the range of this function. So what would it mean to be in the range of this function it means that there exists some vector X in the domain that under this map T, under this multiplication by A, winds up mapping to B. And this is equivalent to saying that the columns of matrix A span all of Rm. We must be able to take some linear combinations, since that's how this product of A and X is defined. So we must be able to take um, linear combinations of the columns of vector A and by taking linear combinations of the columns of A, we'll be able to construct any vector in the codomain Rm. So that's a nice wrap for chapter one. On this slide, we really connected back a lot of the main ideas that we've been discussing so far.